Welcome back to Inside Cajun Nation, everybody. George Faust, pleased to be joined by the head baseball coach for the Raging Cajuns, Coach Matt Deggs. And Coach, uh, when you look at, uh, let's just talk, get, get right into it and talk a little bit about how the offseason went with regards to kind of getting your team prepared for this moment and getting set for the season. Uh, you played a couple of uh, teams in LSU and Northwestern State, performed pretty well I, I, from what I could gauge. Uh, how did you think the offseason went? It was a, it was a very, I've, I've used this word a lot, George, uh, rewarding, uh, it's very rewarding fall. And we were able to get back to our roots a little bit and uh, try to establish, you know, a little, little bit more normalcy as far as how we go about doing things. And uh, for you to do that, you've got to have the personnel that, you know, you're accustomed to and, and uh, that can be coached by you and, and, and your staff. And so, uh, you know, going into what's what's year three, which really feels a little bit like year one or two, uh, you know, when you factor in, in COVID and, and just everything that we've been through, uh, it was good to get back to running what we call the Omaha Cup, which is a 14-week competition. Uh, we were able to really serve the community. I think, you know, we wound up near the top in the fall of community service hours. The team is going to check in with another three-point one or two in the classroom and uh so we were just able to to have a very dynamic fall check a lot of boxes and uh you really start to establish our system uh you, you're right we did perform well against northwestern state uh you know pitched it extremely well defended well uh northwestern state's good they have some good arms uh they were they were really a tough test and we were able to to win both those games and and uh, then come out against uh, actually we played the 2014 team and uh, in, a, in a little inner squad and that that's always fun anytime we get to see those guys and get them around the team and uh, you know they gave us a great game and then went over to LSU and uh, played all day uh, maybe 16 18 innings something like that and uh, LSU's good. Uh, they're going to be very offensive. Uh, obviously, they have a great coaching staff, a great head coach in Jay. Uh, but boy, we gave them a run for their money and had a lead in the in the what would be the eighth in both games, and just weren't able to hold it. But I think I was more encouraged by the fact that I think we scored 16, 17 runs on a day uh, against some good arms, and so. Uh, just looking at it and, and looking at what we did this fall, I think we're going to be a little more offensive, a little a little more what people are accustomed to around here uh, with our offense. And so uh, that's been fun. Kids played hard. They, they love each other and, and got after it. I don't know what will happen, uh, you know, when the, when the bullets start flying for real, but they've been a, they've been fun to coach and uh, just absolutely gotten after it both on and off the field. Uh, you talked a little bit about it seems like, uh, you know, year one or whatever, just because of the, the way the, the COVID has kind of hit you. Uh, you did just finish your first full season. So it's kind of uh, – uh, and, and you got this team to the semifinals of the Sunbelt Conference. It, it, what do you learn from, from that experience and how, how do you, you know, catapult that into a Sunbelt championship? into a regional appearance and, and a postseason NCAA appearance and getting to where you want to go? Well, I was just, I was just proud we got to play a full season, yeah. and, which was nice. <laughs> and in a lot of respects, last year was as difficult or more difficult than the first one, uh, just because of all the restrictions and the, the you know, the uh, contact tracing and this and that and guys missing time and teams having to cancel or whatever it might be. Uh, and so when you, when you really step back and look at it and you go, wow, man, we got here under really tragic circumstances with coaches passing and uh, inherited a, a ball club that, that needed to get better and uh, then get hit with a canceled season and then the restrictions uh, the following year. And to come out and, and win our division and, and really, you know, should win a semifinal game uh, and get to the finals, we have the winning run at second base with no outs. I mean, uh, in, in extra innings, that's that's just – that's got to be game, set, match. And so uh, you can look at it and go, man, you got to coach it better. Or you can look at it and go, 
maybe that's one of y'all's better jobs you did. I don't know. Uh, you know, I was disappointed for a lot of it. And I, you know, talking to my wife and she's like, well, maybe you guys did a pretty good job and, you know, getting to where you got and, let's see if we can, you know, parlay that into something moving forward. You're going to have more personnel coming in. And uh, so that's kind of the way it's played out. And, and uh, you know, I think we've got some footing to build off of, and there's a lot of hunger and uh, guys are eager to, to get this program where it needs to be. Coach, uh, obviously you're going to hit a little more, you said, but uh, pitching is also very important. Obviously uh, you have to replace a couple of guys and, Eric Getty and Cook, and how is that that kind of dynamic coming coming along? I don't know that you replace at, at our level, you know, arms of that magnitude every year. Uh, you know, I think Spence was a little bit of a dark horse. I don't know if anybody really saw that coming uh, from the standpoint of what he did, you know, early all the way through kind of the middle of the season. It was all American type stuff. Uh, and then you know, Cook realizing who he is and learning how to pitch with just tremendous stuff. Uh, that's hard to replace, but uh, added Coach Seth Thibodeau, who's come in as the associate head coach and uh, done a tremendous job coaching the pitchers and, and uh, got some good guys back and, and added a few and hit the transfer portal for a couple of guys. And, and, you know, I think what you're going to see is a rock solid, efficient, strike pumping pitching staff that's not afraid to pitch off their fastball and, uh, you know, can force contact early in counts, fill their position, hold runners, all the stuff you look for. And uh, it's a tough staff. They've worked extremely hard. And I think they're going to be reliable and dependable. We, uh, what about uh, at catcher? You, you lose a guy like Drake and – you know, you you talked about it last year. Just the way he played the game, you really admired. And, and it's it, you know, is there another guy who who you've seen that maybe is stepping up to that position? Well, the the kind of year that that you know, Ozzy came in and made the most of his last year. Mm -hmm. And here's a guy that had been a good player for you know three four years, and uh, really came in and realized who he was and what he was all about realized his potential and, and, you know, had an opportunity and, and is still playing in the New York Mets organization, which I'm really proud of. Uh, he was able to learn how to uh, accentuate his leadership abilities and just kind of play fast, hard and loose. And I think he obviously put together a tremendous season and I think he had a lot of fun, uh, you know, got, got a little bit further in his master's degree and has a chance to play for a paycheck right now. Those type stories don't happen every year. And so uh, somebody's going to have to step up and, and uh, fill that spot. That's probably the biggest hole. Uh, and I think it's Julian Brock's turn. You know, we've had him. This is his third year. He's had limited time just because Sebastian Toro in year one and the season gets canceled. And uh, you look up and Sebastian uh, gets his degree, decides to stay in Puerto Rico with his girlfriend. Uh, you know, great kid. We wish him the best. Uh, and, and you replaced him with Ozzy, who I had seen in Sam Houston State, but you really don't know. Uh, and just comes in and just grabs a hold of that thing and won't let go of it. Uh, so it's kind of tough luck for Julian. Uh, so he's waited his time and, and uh, he had a really good fall. You know, his biggest tool is he can throw and he's got a chance to really hit at a high level. Uh, and so it's uh, it's it's his job right now, and and uh, I would really expect him to take off and run with it. He, everything's there for him to do the job. It's just a matter of getting confidence in game and and running that pitching staff and and uh, you know proving that he's the guy that can host the party back there. Because really, that's what you're looking for. Is in your catcher, you know, hitting is is that's extra. That's gravy. You want a guy that can host a great party and. Make sure everybody uh, knows what they need to do and has fun doing it and, and sets and maintains a great tone. All right, Coach, uh, hang tight. We'll, we're we're going to come back, talk a little more. I, I looked at that schedule, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, that's going to be a lot of fun to, to watch you guys play, and we're going to talk about Certainly. that when we, when we come back right here on Inside Cajun Nation. Don't go away. We're back. <laughs> 